The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Recently, a dear friend sent me several of his favorite quotations in a letter. Among them, this from Winston Churchill. The truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, and ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. And this one, be like the chamomile plant. The more you're trodden upon, the more you flourish. It is true. Truth is incontrovertible, indestructible. Plato declared God is truth, and light is his shadow. And however violently or vociferously you may attack or deride the living truths of the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, still in the end, there they are, undiminished by your derision, unsullied by your slander. And if you will live, dare to live by these living truths as the son or the daughter of the living God you were born and created to be, your soul will never, ever die. And the more you are trodden upon, the more you will flourish. For it is written that with God all things are possible. But you must dare to heed the truth. You must dare to act upon it. One Friday night it was, the two patrolmen in New York received a report on their patrol car radio that someone was reporting smelling gas fumes in the area about two miles north of the John F. Kennedy International Airport. When they arrived, these gas fumes were rushing out of the ground with a tremendous roar. My immediate reaction was that we were on the verge of a tremendous disaster, that we had to get those people out of there, patrolman John O'Connor told reporters later the next day. O'Connor worked one side of the street, and patrolman Frank Keating worked the other. They began pounding on the doors and yelling at the occupants to get out. Don't bother to grab anything, they said. Just leave. And without question, the occupants in their night clothes poured out onto the sidewalks and rushed up the street away from the gas. Then, at 5.30 in the morning, 5.30 a.m., the blast came tremendous. The fumes went up with such a roar it knocked one policeman down. It was likened to an atom bomb blast by another. And yet, in those three hours... Thanks to the immediate cooperation of 54 fire companies and some 600 men and women of the fire and police agencies, the fire described by one fire chief as the worst in a generation was brought completely under control. Property damage was totaled in the millions of dollars, but not one single life, man, woman, or child was lost. And why? Because of the loving concern of two patrolmen, Keating and O'Connor, and because hundreds of Queens, New York residents believed the patrolman's warnings and got out of the danger zone in time. But imagine for a moment what would have happened if Keating and O'Connor had said, oh, well, there's some danger here, all right, but let's not be fanatic, let's not get emotional, let's not get people worked up at all. Hundreds of people would have lost their lives instantly and without warning. Consider this profound principle of human life that true love, genuine love, is always willing to warn. A loving mother will shout at her two-year-old daughter who's trying to eat the detergent. A loving father will yell, watch out for that car, as he sees his young son ready to run into the street after his baseball. It's a loving warning. And hence, this ancient admonition. The wages of sin are death. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, and warned Jesus, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? The spiritual aspect of human life is most important. That is the most important part about you, not your external self, but your internal self. Inscribed on a building at New York University are these words, you are not what you think you are, you are what you think. As it is written in the scriptures, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And when you think of yourself, of your life, of your situation, of the world, of existence itself, think not in the context of doubt, but think in the context of faith. Said Jesus, these four powerful words, have faith in God. Learn to trust God, to love God, even though you may not understand the perplexities and the difficulties of your life. 
The scripture says it, and I believe it. God is love. Think of that for a moment. That's what God is. God is love. God wills the best for you, for your present life, your future, your eternal life. God loves you with an almost blinding affection. God cares for you, has compassion and concern for you. But you, in turn, have choices to make regarding your life, what you're going to do, how you're going to think and feel, act and react. Now, I'm from southwest Kansas, Garden City, near Dodge City, Kansas. Born and reared there, if a farmer back in my home state would be so foolish as to sow weeds and thistles out in his wheat field, the weeds and the thistles would begin to grow in the field, and no matter how much that farmer might talk about the love of God and even preach a sermon on Sunday or pray at the dinner table, the weeds and the thistles would continue to grow because there are natural laws of cause and effect upon this planet, laws of sowing and reaping. As it is written, as a man sows, so shall he also reap. It is also written, you have sown to the wind and you reap the whirlwind. You cannot blame God because of the harvest which you yourself are reaping because you yourself have sown that harvest. God didn't sow the seed. God is love. God is good. But as you sow, so shall you also reap. Imagine tenants in an apartment building. No work, no jobs behind on their rent, yet putting all the blame on the landlord because he built the apartment building. A philosophic absurdity to turn against God in your distress in your life it would be like a blind man kicking his seeing eye dog around the room in anger because of his blindness, or a ship's captain cursing at the lighthouse on the shore because of the storm tossed sea. Refuse to permit the perplexities of life to make you bitter because God is love and God loves you. You are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of the living God with a divine destiny before you and the Spirit of God within you. If you insist on crying over spilt milk, at least condense it. The men and women who are joyous and who enlighten the world are not carefree souls who have never known pain or agony. Rather, they are the ones who have realized that suffering can instruct the human spirit, can create a new song in the night. The poet Stamphill wrote, God washed my eyes with tears that I might see. The broken heart I had was good for me. Sounds paradoxical, and yet it is true. I read the story of one artist who refused to yield to paralysis. She continued painting, holding the paintbrush in her teeth. After five years in a hospital, this Jacksonville, Florida resident was able to sit up, although paralyzed from the neck down. A doctor brought her an easel, brush, and paint. Then she began the excruciating struggle of learning how to draw even a straight line, which for a while she could not do. But ten years later, she completed her first drawing, and today she illustrates cards, stationery, and notepaper. She is a successful commercial artist. Was the road an easy one? No. But this artist wrote, and I quote, when you face the prospect of living your entire life more helplessly than a baby, you either give up and die, or else you say, God, please, I can't do this alone. You have to help me. And by faith in God, she found that victory of spirit. And so can you. God is there with you this very moment. Regardless of the perplexities, the problems, the arduous difficulties which you may encounter, God is there with you, and God will help you in this hour. If, as you are listening to this radio broadcast somewhere on this earth, or perhaps listening on a cassette recording of the broadcast, this truth remains eternally the same, that God can and will assist you. Man's extremity wrote Spurgeon, is God's opportunity. The psalmist David wrote, In my distress I cried unto the Lord. In my distress. You may be at your wit's end. As the song says, tired of living, scared of dying. You may not know which way to turn. Turn your face to heaven and call upon God, for it is written, listen to these words, whosoever shall call upon the name of God, of the Lord shall be saved. As my carpenter co-worker friend says that the only way out is up. God has a plan for this planet and a will for your life. And if you seek it, you can and will find it and begin to live as you've longed in your soul to live, in joy, in power, and in purpose. God has great 
uses for your life. Regardless of whether you've thought of your life ever before in that framework, in that context, that God has a use for you. Regardless of what your use is or how useless you may feel about yourself. Or you may have been told all your years of growing up, you're never going to amount to anything. But you amount to something to God. You matter to God. And God can use your life. Rich or poor, seemingly talented, seemingly untalented, God can use your life. It was the wife of the founder of the famous Metropolitan Life Insurance Company who wrote the melody to the great old hymn, Blessed Assurance. Her name was Mrs. Joseph K. Knapp. One day Mrs. Knapp had invited her friend, the blind poetess Fanny Crosby, to her palatial New York City home in which she had the largest pipe organ which ever was installed in a private home, at least at that time. Mrs. Knapp began playing for her friend a melody three or four times on the piano for this poet to listen to. She said, what do you think that tune is saying? Because she had the melody but no words to it. Mrs. Knapp asked, what does the tune, the melody, say to you? And the poet immediately replied two words, blessed assurance. And in just a few minutes, Mrs. Crosby had written the complete poem, just as millions sing it still today. It was first published in 1873. Its message is ever fresh and inspiring. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let your life... Likewise, be a brim with praise and full of worship for the living God who loves you with a love which will not let you go. Praise and magnify, give laud and honor to the very creator of all that is, who brought you into being and has given a fragment of infinity to indwell your mortal mind to lead you every step of the way. For it is written, you will hear a voice behind your ear saying, this is the way. Walk therein. God has a will for your life, a plan for this planet, a purpose for your existence, and enthusiasm and joy and love and peace and power for the living of your life. And if you've not ever claimed that before in living faith, you can begin by claiming it right here, right now, this very moment. It can begin for you this instant, if you will have it so. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, The Fatherhood of God and the Brotherhood of Man. How can you enrich and enliven your inner spiritual life? Write for this free literature to us, no cost, no charge, no obligation, to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.